Hi everyone, and welcome to your free tutorial from The Ornament Girl. My name is Kennedy, and today I'll be showing you how to make these adorable little whimsical birds. Make sure you check out the link below the video to get a hold of your free printable supply list that also comes with clickable links to help you gather materials for your pattern. This adorable whimsical birds pattern was designed by Darlene. It comes together super quickly and we think you'll be mixing and matching colors to make a whole flock of birds in no time. In order to complete this pattern, you'll need a soft foam disc, satin straight pins, fabric and ribbon. If you would like to add the feet to your bird, you'll need two long looped pins and two pieces of wire. If you'd like to add a hanger, you'll need a bead cap and a piece of hanger string. You'll need two beads or googly eyes to add the eyes to your bird, and a bead for the beak. Other tools you'll need to complete your pattern include a flexible tape measure, fabric scissors, a pen for making some marks on your foam, and a little bit of glue or a glue dot if you're adding googly eyes onto your bird. Make sure you check out the free printable supply list linked below the video to get all of the correct quantities and measurements for your materials. Once you have all of your tools and materials gathered, we can get started on your whimsical bird. All right, so this very first step is optional. I am going to mark the equator on my disc-shaped foam to help myself see it and to help you see it in the video. You don't have to mark this equator on your foam, but it does help throughout the pattern to know where that equator line is. So on your disc-shaped foam, if you're facing the narrow end, there is this mold line cutting the foam in half where the two halves of the disc meet. I'm just lightly marking that. It doesn't have to be exact, but you wanna know where that equator is and marking it with a pen just makes it a little easier to see throughout the pattern. Alrighty, once that's marked, we can start adding some fabric. Beginning with one of your long 1 inch by 43 and a half inch strips, fold this strip in half lengthwise. You aren't going to be able to fold the entire 43 inch strip at one time, but that's okay. Just fold a few inches of it at a time and we'll keep folding as we add it to the ornament. So I'm just creasing that fold so it's nice and crisp. And now I'm going to lay my folded edge, the folded edges on the left here, I'm laying that along the equator at any point on my disc. So just lay that edge along the equator and at the top of your fabric, it's gonna cross over the equator just a little bit and that is fine. But what we want to do here is pin the fabric at the points where it meets the equator. So I'm pinning up here on that equator line and following down, maybe just doing about three or four pins. I'm gonna do three here. Adding one more at this bottom corner where my fabric is touching the equator. And now we're going to do the scribble fold to cover the entire front side of the disc. So again, you wanna keep folding your fabric in half before you use it. So I'm just making sure my next little section of fabric is creased here and you fold your fabric back up, covering the raw edges of the piece you just placed. On this first fold, we aren't covering these pins, but around this entire ornament, we are going to keep our pins along the equator so that we can cover them with a band later on. So I'm just folding my fabric upward, covering the raw edges of the previous piece, and now I'm gonna place a pin at the top edge where it's touching the equator, overlapping the equator, and at the bottom edge where the fabric is overlapping the equator. And you can sort of pull your fabric aside to see where that equator is. Now I'm creasing in half my next section of fabric, folding it back down to cover the raw edges of that previous piece. And you're sort of curving because you do want to hit that equator again and you're going over a round surface. And these folds will be closer together at the beginning and as we flatten out over the disc they can spread out a little more 
but the goal is to just always make sure you're covering the raw edges of the previous piece and then that you meet the equator again so that you can pin at each edge along the equator line. Now fold your next section in half and if you need to lay it down to crease it, that is fine. And fold it back up over itself, covering the raw edges of the piece you just laid down. And you can see the further we get, the more spread out these are. You don't have to be exact about how spaced out they are. Really make sure that it's not going to slide around and leave a foam gap showing in between those pieces of fabric. So that's just really how you want to make sure you're spacing them so that it's nice and secure and no foam is going to show between. And then just continue to pin wherever your fabric crosses over the equator. And you're just going to continue this scribble fold up and down, back and forth, covering your raw edges each time, always pinning your piece with two pins, keeping them on that equator line, and keep continuing this back and forth until the entire front side of the disc is almost covered. Now I'm approaching the end of this front side. I have one more fold to make. I'm going to fold my fabric back down over itself. Gotta fold it in half first. Back down over itself. And now I want to secure it all the way along that equator. It didn't quite make it down here, but we'll cover that with our band. So I'm just pinning down so that these edges aren't springing up or fraying. I'm pinning pretty much right along that equator to secure the entire edge of the piece. All right, so now that front side is covered with the scribble fold and there are only a few sections that are way overlapping into the other side. I have these corners that are pushing over into the other side of the foam. So what I'm going to do here is add a couple of extra pins along that pin line, that equator line, so that when I trim these corners off, I know those pieces are secured and they aren't going to come undone or unfolded. Same down here, just filling in. That equator line. So that when I trim off these little corners, I know that the piece is secured. Now with my fabric scissors, I am just trimming along that equator any little strings that I have or little corners of fabric that are jutting over into the other side of the foam. And just like that, side one is finished. Now we're going to do the same thing on side two. So grab your second piece of one inch by 43 and a half inch fabric and start folding a little bit of it in half lengthwise. Remember, you don't have to try to keep this entire long piece folded all at once. You can work in little sections. Once you have that folded, we can return to our foam. And to make sure that we are orienting our folds the same way as the first piece, Find the section where your folded edge is touching the equator. So down here I have raw edges touching the equator. That's where I ended. I want to return to where I started with my folded edges touching the equator and line up my folded edge with that equator on this side as well. 
So again, you're just lining up a little section of your fabric, that folded edge touching the equator, and you wanna pin it along the equator line. Once that is pinned, fold your next little section in half lengthwise and fold the fabric back up over itself, covering those raw edges and pinning along the equator. And now you're going to continue around the ornament exactly as you did on side one, just folding upward and downward with your piece folded in half lengthwise, covering the raw edges, making sure no foam is going to show through, and pinning along the equator line. Once you fold up your final piece, my fabric, as you can see, was a little bit short, but I'm going to cover that with my band. I think my piece was a little bit shorter than the measurement. Pin along the equator, and now go around and any corners that are jutting over into the other side, make sure you're just pinning those down so that when you trim them, they are nice and secured. Now you can trim any corners that are going over into side one. If you're having more of a foam gap showing here, if it's big enough that you're worried you won't be able to cover it with your band, you can undo your scribble folds and make them a little further apart to conserve more fabric for that last piece. Now that side one and side two are covered, you get to really get creative and start adding the character to your bird with your ribbon tail and feathers. Here is where you want to decide if you want your scribble folds running horizontally or vertically. With my bluebird here, you can see when they're running horizontally, your wings will be sticking more straight up. Or you can do the tactic that I'm going to do in this bird where I have my folds running vertically with the folded edges on the right. So now my wing is going to stick out backward to the right side of the bird. So once you decide how that's going to be oriented, you are going to grab your 12 inch piece of ribbon and we're going to start adding the tail. So you want to decide where you want the tail to be. We like to move ours up from the center, but this is how I'm orienting my bird with my folded edges on the right. I'm gonna add my tail to the right side. So maybe about an inch up from the center of the right side, Lay your ribbon along the edge of the foam there, centered over the equator, with the long piece of ribbon going upward toward the top. And now secure this with two pins. Two pins will help it make sure it doesn't twist on those pins and go to the right or the left. We want it to stay nice and centered. And now you're going to make a loop, and this loop should be about two inches. So I'm going to grab my tape measure here. Yep, that's about two inches from where I'm going to pin again up to the top of that loop. All I did was just bring my ribbon back down, 
making sure that that loop is around two inches and this is where you can get creative you can use different lengths to make different loops and change your embellishments up how you want now i'm going to pin with two more pins I'm keeping them an eighth of an inch below those two pins holding the first piece of ribbon in place. Move that up a little bit. You want to leave a little bit of a gap for one more set of pins in between them. And now make another loop of ribbon. This time make it about an inch and a half. So it's going to be a little shorter than that top loop was. Make sure you're keeping it centered. So again, all I did there was just fold it up and back down to make a loop and I'm keeping it centered along the equator. And now when I pin this loop down, I want those pins to fall between the two sets of pins I already placed. So you're pinning below the first set of pins and above the second set of pins and this just helps to hide most of them. Make your final loop, center it along the equator, and now this set of pins should fall about an eighth of an inch below that bottom set of pins right there and we're going to pin our band in between those two pins to give us a nice finished edge so at first your bottom loop is going to kind of fall down but once we put our band right here in between them it will help hold it up and now your birdie has a cute little tail and again you could put this tail as high or as low as you want you can change up the layout of your bird to give it its own unique character now that our tail is added, let's use a one by 11 inch strip to add the band. And there, there are a couple different options here. You can fold this in thirds if that will be wide enough to cover the raw edges and pins around your ornament. Or if you're not sure folding it in thirds will be wide enough, you could fold this strip in half crease the center, unfold, and then fold each raw edge up to that center crease. And this will give you a band that's about half an inch wide. And you could even iron these tiny little folds if that helps you keep them in place as well. And again, you're not gonna be able to fold the entire band at one time. So just give yourself the space to work with a little bit at a time. So I have the beginning of my band folded. I'm returning to my tail and with my band facing vertically, so the long side of my band is going to the top and I have the raw edges facing me. I'm centering this along the equator and leaving just a little bit, like a quarter of an inch, maybe even less if you're able to, at the bottom. And you're going to pin this with two pins, and those pins should fall right above this bottom set of pins for the tail here. So that's gonna help hold everything in place. So again, so again, my band is folded. I'm lining it up with the equator and I'm going to pin with two pins that fall right above the bottom two pins of the tail. And now that helps hold your tail up, that bottom loop isn't falling down. And then keeping your raw edges folded to the center or folded in thirds however you decided to do that fold the band down over itself so now you can see we have that nice folded edge there at the top and you'll continue wrapping this band all the way around the ornament covering the raw edges and pins and you can keep flipping it over to fold it I know it's a tiny little piece of fabric, so just be patient with yourself. 
and it gives us that nice finished look around the edge of the ornament. It's kind of amazing how big of a difference adding your band makes. There's where I had that foam gap and my band is covering it nicely. And when you return to the tail, you can add a temporary pin or a couple of temporary pins so that you don't lose the tautness of the band that you just wrapped all the way around. So I'm just adding two pins so that all this work I just did stays in place while I'm working on finishing up my band here. So what we're going to do to give ourselves that nice folded edge is fold our fabric under itself right where it meets the tail here. So here's where it meets the tail. I'm just pressing that in and at first I'm going to crease it the opposite way just so I know right where that crease needs to fall. I'm going to give myself a nice crease in that fabric and now you only need about a quarter of an inch past that crease. So here's my crease right here. I'm moving up about a quarter of an inch and trimming my band. And now at that crease, fold it the opposite way. So I'm folding that short raw edge underneath the rest of the band and then laying it along the ornament so that the crease falls right at the edge of the tail, just like that. So now my folded edge of my band is landing right at the corner of my tail. So we have a nice finished band all the way around. And now to pin this in place, you want to pin just that bottom layer that you just folded under. So I'm sticking my pin between the two layers here and pressing it into the foam and then scooching my top layer of fabric back out and around the band. So back out and around the pin, I'm sorry, so that it is hidden underneath the band there. And then we'll very carefully do that on the other edge as well. I'm tucking a pin underneath the top layer of fabric, pinning that band in place, and then bringing that top layer out and around to hide the pin underneath. Now you can remove these two temporary pins because your band is secured in place. And now you have all of your raw edges and pins covered and your tail is standing up nice and springy. Now we can add some wings. For each wing, you will have two three inch pieces of ribbon and one three and a half inch piece of ribbon. Starting with a three inch piece, just fold it in half so that the raw edges meet each other and pin right through that near those raw edges. You don't wanna pin so close that your pin rips through the ribbon, but just pin so that you have a nice little loop pinned at the bottom there. Now with a three and a half inch piece, do the same, fold that in half, and with the same pin, we're just going to layer our wing here. So I've pinned through it again, now I have a three inch loop, a three and a half inch loop, and we'll add one more with our final piece of three inch long ribbon. And pin with that same pin. So now we have a cute little wing made and you can sort of splay this out. It's a little bit easier to do that on the pin before you add it to the bird. Now returning to your ornament, decide where you want your wings to fall and they really can go anywhere. This is a great way to customize your bird and give it the style that you want. But you're going to pick one of these folds to fold backward and place your wing underneath there. So I'm picking sort of this center fold and I'm gonna go right toward the middle of my bird. But you could have your wing higher, you could have your wing lower. I'm gonna go a little above center, pull, gently pull this fold back and pin my wing in place.
and get it situated how I want it and now fold that piece of fabric back over to cover the pins and the raw edges of your ribbon. And now your bird has a wing. Let's do that same process on the other side. Just layer your three, three and a half and three inch piece of ribbon folded into loops all onto one pin. And now returning to your bird, flip it over and you just want to try to find the same general area to add your wing on the second side. So I'm just following my folds over. You could measure down and over to figure out if you want to try to be exact. I'm going to put mine about here so I'm just gently pulling that fold back. Pinning my wing in place. Get those loops situated how I want them to be. And now return that fold back into place. And now your bird has two wings. Absolutely adorable. Let's add the face of your bird. To add a beak, I am just using an orange teardrop shaped bead. You could use a cone shaped bead or two bicone beads to add two pieces of the beak, but you are going to just pin through this bead and on the front center of your band, decide where you want your little birdie's face to fall, how you want it to be angled, and just press that beak right into the foam, trying to center it over your band if possible. And again, you could have your face pointing straight out, you could have it pointing upward. There's so many different ways you can give your bird a little different personality with this pattern. On some of my birds, I just used a black bead for the eyes. On this one, I'm going to use two little googly eyes just to show you a different option. So I just have two quarter inch googly eyes here and one little glue dot, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of my glue dot Put that on the back of my eye and decide where I want those to fall on my bird. This gives them a funny little look. Definitely whimsical. And I'll do the same for the other side. Super cute. And now we'll go through the steps to add the feet to your bird. With a six inch piece of wire, fold this in half. So I'm just putting the ends together there and then making a little bend at that center point. And that's going to be the middle toe of the bird's foot. And now about a half inch down from that fold, and you could do higher or lower to make the feet longer or shorter, you're going to bring the wire back up and make a second downward loop. So now I have two loops at the top of my wire and on the left side, you're going to repeat that, folding it up and back down. And now you can see we have three little toes on our bird's foot there. And when you cross those pieces at the back to make that little triangle shape, you can see how it becomes a little bird foot. And now with an extra long loop topped pin, slide that loop onto one of the prongs of wire. And now you are just going to wrap this wire around this pin. So it's secured to the foot because we put that loop onto the wire. And now I'm just going to bring this wire up and carefully continue wrapping it all, all the way around the pin. This makes our bird's little stick legs. And once that is wrapped, then you can wrap the other remaining piece around. And then once that's all wrapped, you can straighten your foot straighten out the foot so that it is flat 
at the bottom of the pin, change up the shape a little. Now I have a little bird foot and all I'm going to do is just pin that right into the bottom of my bird on one side of the foam. And now he has a little leg with a foot and I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side. So again, fold your wire in half. At the right side, about half inch down, fold up and down and at the left side fold up and down cross your two pieces to make your little triangle shaped foot there slide your pin onto one of those pieces and begin wrapping the ends of wire around the pin Once that crazy little foot is finished, you can add it to the other side of your bird. And now if you aren't adding a hanger, then your whimsical bird is finished. If you do want to add a hanger to hang your ornament, I'll show you how to do that now. With a 10 inch piece of hanger string, put the ends together and tie a knot. You can cut off those extra long pieces at the bottom. Now thread a pin with a bead or a bead cap or both if you want. I'm going to do both here, little bead, bead cap, and then press that pin directly through the knot that you just tied in your hanger string. And once that is threaded on, you can take the sides of your hanger string out to the sides of your bead cap and then just pin this directly into the top center of your ornament and now you have a cute little way to hang your bird as well I really hope you all had a wonderful time making this whimsical bird ornament. As you can see, there's so many different color combinations you can do and different embellishments you can add to give each bird its own little look and personality. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we can't wait to see what bird ornaments you make. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.